one and all present here. I'm happy to welcome you all in this value added course. This is the first day of VAC and the second day is on 14th May. A topic for the value added course in the academic year 2021-2022 even is implementation of digital logic and analog circuits using PSPICE software. By the end of this course, you will definitely gain some knowledge like designing, implementing and testing of digital and analog circuits using PSPICE software. And this will be very much helpful for your mini projects, projects as well as in your career growth. Today, in the first session, let us see the introduction about digital circuits followed by PSPICE introduction and also about various parameters and tabs in PSPI software. And then finally, we'll see about implementation, designing, and testing of few digital logic circuits using PSPI software. Students, kindly make note of all sessions and clarify your doubts at the end of each session. And the time will be provided to clarify your doubts after each content in between. Please don't interrupt the session. There will be four sessions in each day. Today, session one is from 9 to 10.30, and two is from 10.45 to 12.15, three is from 1.15 to 2.30, and fourth session is from 2.45 to 4. Next Saturday, again, four sessions will be there. And in the last session, that will be an an MCQ test for 100 marks. It contains 25 questions and each question carries four marks. And the feedback link will be provided to submit the feedback at the end. So dear students, kindly listen to each session carefully and prepare notes for each session. It will be useful for your knowledge growth. The first session, Introduction to Digital Circuits, will be handled by Mrs. Vanilla ma'am. Now I call upon Mrs. Vanilla ma'am to handle the session. Ma'am. Thank you, Bensi. And uh, thank you all the students for joining the courses. Let's keep learning because learning is very important to our life. It only makes us to lead our life. Okay, students? Okay. Is the screen visible? Yes. Okay. The students, thank you so much for joining the course. And today in the first session, I'm going to take give you the refresh about the concepts which we have already known about the digital logic circuits. So the main uh, aim of the program value added courses is this courses uh, to know how to use the simulator for digital logic circuits and the analog circuits. So this today, today the whole day you will learn to know about how to use the simulator and what are the basics of this uh, digital logic circuits. And the next Saturday you will come to know about the analog logic circuits and how to use the simulator for that. Okay, students. So now I will go into the digital logic circuit. So as we know already, the electronic circuits have the two major division. One is about the digital systems and another one is about the analog system. So here today in the session, we will know what are the basics of this digital system. Okay, what is digital logic levels? What is actually meaning for logic zero and logic one? How to recognize that the, the logic is zero or one? It is, it is only basics of about the voltage levels on that line. Okay, so uh, next uh, diagram you can see that <coughs> here logic one range. So we know it's zero to five volt in that zero to points eight potential is taken as logic zero range and the two volt to five volt. So when you measure, use your multimeter on the line to measure the voltage. If the voltage lie between two to five, then the 
logic on the line is considered as logic one if the potential on the two terminal of your multimeter is between 0 to 0 0.8 then it is taken as logic 0. So in between that 0.8 to 2 is called state transition but it is not the case for all the digital systems because based on the uh, programmer or the designer circuit the range may vary. OK, it's not only 2 to 5 in some circuits. It is taken as 1.5 to 5 in some circuits. It is taken as 0 to 1. So it is all about the designer and the system. So whenever you are want to use that ICs, OK, what you have to do is you have to go for the uh, data sheet. So from the data sheet, you can come to know that what is logic 0 for that and logic 1 potentials. So throughout the digital systems, it is only recognizable at logic 1 and logic 0. So in the Boolean algebra, what is the difference between Boolean algebra and the arithmetic algebra? So in the arithmetic algebra, we came to know that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. OK, here the plus symbol and the minus symbol are used. But in the case of this Boolean algebra, it is not only plus and minus. Here the operators are used. OK, so here what is that actually in this case when you add 1 plus 1 that when you take into the R gate 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. OK, so the difference is that in the Boolean algebra we have plus and the dot operator. So plus for R logic and dot for and logic. OK, we don't have any subtraction or a division like in mathematics that is called arithmetic algebra. So we have plus plus symbol in algebra is for R logic and dot symbol in algebra is for sorry Boolean for. And this is the slight change in. Can see. Ma'am. Is my ma slide changing? Um, uh, now it's in oh, the yes, logic circuit, ma'am. Okay. Ma Thank you. Yes. Ah. Oh. Students, can you able to see the digital logic gates? Slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so, can see some people are waiting in the lobby. You should admit them, so then only they can enter into the course. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay ma'am. Ma okay. So listen, students. So there are three fundamental logical operations. So if we take this diagram, you can see that that whole A. Okay. When we add that A with another logic B, then the common. Okay, that is common between that A, the A and the B is and session. Then what is not A? So very simple, OK? So I'm going to take the common value or <clears throat> or going to take the common or going to take add the numbers or going to take the complement. OK, only these three are the basics in the digital systems. OK, so in the not A, not A, that is A, you know it. And in the, south, in the square box, you can know that the not A is the complement of that. So similarly for the R logic, we have to add all are combined, all are combined that A and B values. So these are the basics in the basic functions in the binary logic. OK, they are and are not and each of them have their specific symbol. OK, so here we'll see about the AND gate. So we know it AND gate need to input X and Y and gives an output is it. OK, how it can be represented in the switch? Yes, see AND is nothing but when both the switches are closed, you can see this when the X is one, the switch will be closed and when Y is one, this with the switch will be closed, right? OK, so when the X is equal to one, then this will will be closed and then when y equal to one this will be closed so see this this is an input side and this is an output side for an example okay what is there when these two gates are closed then that input will be taken into the output listen all of you that here here that this this one is 
in this case, you can see that they are not performing any operation. OK, addition, subtraction, multiplication, no operation, just forwarding that input to the output. OK, to do that, these two variables are assigned as I hope you understand. OK, the logic is are not doing any operation, just forwarding input to the output based on that input conditions. OK, this one you have to keep it in your mind. We're not doing any operations. See, we are doing the Boolean functions. We are writing that expressions. OK, Boolean function expressions, but that is only forwarding input to the output by changing that based on the change in the input side. OK, this has to be taken into the account. So what is that? How to express express this that Y output is equal to input if I taking that input as I, OK, I into X into Y. This is that expressions. But if you see in that examples or uh, you used to write that output of the uh, and get is X dot Y. Where is that I? Very simple, OK? It is a binary logic gate, so I can be 0 or 1. If I is 0, what happened? Y is equal to 0. If I is equal to 1, what is that? X into Y. OK, that is why when representing the digital logic, it is only writing that variable X into Y, not an input. OK, because in the beginning, when you learn about the gates, we used to write only that um, uh, 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 variables X and Y. But when you take into the decoder encoder, where we will include that here? input because their input will change. OK, I not I1, I2, I3. So students, you will get confused why that I is not taken in this first part and why that I is taken in the next part. It is only because that here only one input. If you have any confusions, so you can take that I into the T equations too. So when you take that I is equal to zero, your output is zero. When you take that I is equal to one, then output is going to be X into one. So that is why in general that AND gate expressions are noted as X into one. OK, so in this case, if you see. In this case, you can see that if X and Y, OK, I I'm going to consider the first case in the first case when I equal to zero, we know that irrespective of X and Y, Y is equal to zero. OK, but when I is equal to one, it will be looking into what are the values of X and Y. If X and Y is one, one, then for that case only the Y is going to be one and for the remaining case it is not. OK, students, so this is that. So when you are starting that a Boolean writing the Boolean equations, you can include this I into your chapter, then it will be easy for you to continue with the second part. OK, next is that R gate. So in the R gate, as we discussed already here, that is it is equivalent to what is that input X plus Y. So what is X plus Y? What is this? OK, here X is an variable, Y is an variable, here is an input and here is an output. So what is Y? Y is equal to I into, see this? If X is equal to one, then this gate will be closed. I will reach Y, correct? When Y is equal to one, this will be closed and Y is equal to Y. So there are two possibilities here. When X is one, then what the switch will be closed, okay? Then output will be input. When Y is closed, then also output will be input. When both are closed, then also Y is equal to I. So only for only one condition that Y is not equal to I, that is X equal to Y equal to zero. Because for both the conditions, the gates are not closed, so output equal to input. So this is the case, okay? Is, is it equal to X plus Y? So this is explanation about the R gate. You can see the symbol, okay? Symbol here, this is that for R. Okay. Next is that. So we know that when we take about the analog system that where the voltage and the current are varying with respect to the time and their magnitudes are also changing. OK, so this is that 
But, but in the case of the computer systems, digital computer system, the computer which will deal only with the digital information, that is a binary. Okay. So in the case of the binary, the computer have the memory system which can hold, which can store zero or one, which can store zero or one. Okay. So that is what represented here. So in the basically the basic logic block wherein the binary digital input signal okay that is taken to the gate and it produces the digital output signal now these uh, um, operations okay in the, we are writing that as gate okay this is the black box for this case okay it will give the it takes the input it performs some operations and it produces an output so this is the black box here okay now I have an applications for that. I have an algorithm for that algorithm. I'm going to write a code. OK, this is our expectation. Now the question is, what are the things we can include into this black box? There are two cases. One is combinational logic block and another one is sequential logic block. So the black box can be a combination logic block or a sequential logic block. In the combinational logic block. One minute. So in this case, the block box can be the combination logic block or sequential logic block. OK, so in the combination logic block, if you see that the logic block is going to have only the gates. Or. Or decoder, encoder, multiplexer, everything. What is that inside? Actually, the gates. OK, so when input changes, the output change immediately. With a delay, we know that okay. Whenever we use the circuit, the circuit will take some time to respond. So this is called delay. Okay. Now, what is that in the combination logic block? We are going to have only the gate. So when input changes, output also changes with respect to that. Okay. So these kind of the circuit is called combination logic block. Students, here the gate will not wait for anybody. If there is any change in an input, output will change. In the case of the sequential logic block, if you see that output will not only change with respect to the input, it will change with respect to the previously stayed stored information. OK, or wait for the clock to continue the operations, wait for the clock to perform the operations, wait for the clock to forward input to the output. So this is called sequential logic block. So based on the application, based on the algorithm, we should we should select that combination logic block or the sequential logic block. I repeat the gate. OK, this section, the black box can be the combination logic or the sequential logic block. In the combination logic block going to have only the gate. So when the input changes, output changes immediately with a delay. But in the case of the sequential logic block, the output is not only depends upon the current input, but also depends upon the already stored information. OK, now the next question is so first thing is that. OK, so first thing is that I have an algorithm. OK, OK, this is that first one and the next one. We know that what are the inputs given to that and what are the outputs taken out of it? OK, and the third one now I should choose what logic I'm going to use, whether combinational logic or the sequential logic. Okay, that one you have to choose whether it is a combinational logic or a sequential logic. Okay, if it is a combinational logic, how to design a circuit? If it is a sequential logic, how to design the circuit? This is your next question. Okay, so whatever the thing, whenever you are going to design a digital system, first you have to write your algorithm of a system, and then you should write that input to the what are the inputs you needed, what are the inputs you will get, okay, and what are the outputs for that, okay, because you know that you are going to design a system. You know for these kind of the inputs. I should get this output. So everything is known to you, right? You are the author of the work, the design. So what you will do is then you have to decide 
for this algorithm, whether I need the timing signals or clock signals to proceed with to get my output, or I need only the logic <coughs> circuits to continue. That one you have to decide, and then you should proceed. So now, how these functions are defined, how the logic block and the uh, sequential logic block, combination logic block are defined? It's by two table Boolean function K map. Karnam map. Okay. Two table Boolean function Karnam map. So now we'll continue with the next one. Here, this is the combinational gates. Why it is called combinational logic? Only very simple. When A B changes, X change. Okay. When input changes, output changes. So in this case, uh, we will see that the first symbol is the AND symbol. It's a two input AND gate takes A and B and produces an output. And then the equation is written as X is equal to A dot B or A equal to B. And we know that students, I hope you remember this uh, uh, circuit. Okay, connection, switch connection. So in this case, when both the gates are closed, when both the when both the gates are closed and then only um, uh, the output produces. OK, so for this gate, you can see that when A and B is one, then only output is one. I hope you remember this. OK, and then we'll go for R gate. For the R gate, we know it when both are open for that case only, when both are open for that case only, the output is Z. OK, so that is what this case for the remaining cases. If any one switch is closed, then automatically the output reaches output equal to input. OK, next is an inverter. So I know that inverters are the complement. When X equal to one, output is equal to zero. When X equal to zero, output equal to one. And next is the buffer. What is the buffer? OK, just for used to, to store the data. OK, that is that buffer. Okay, how to write it? That output equation is equal to the input. When A is equal to 0, output is 0. When A is equal to 1, output is 1. This is just a reverse process, okay? Just a reverse that complement and the buffer is vice versa concept. And next is that NAND gate. NAND gate is nothing but AND with a complement. AND with the complement. So and and now what is that and a b and the complement. OK, so in this case, the two table is just reverse of the first one. In the first one you can see that when both are closed, then only the output is equal to input. But in the case of the NAND gate, that is reverse that when both are closed, in this case only you will get that zero. Next is that NAR operation. So NAR operation is just a complement of the R operation. So in this case, wherein NAR, you can see that that 0, 0, when both are 0, 0, output is 0. And for the NAR, when both are 0, it is 1. OK, next we'll go for XR gate. So in the XR gate, you can see that um, if that input has odd numbers of 1, it is not only for it is not only for two input students. Very simple that you should count the number of inputs. If the number of ones in the input is or number, then output is one. For the remaining cases, output is equal to zero. OK, so this is the symbol of that R gate, XR gate. And next is that this is for XNAR gate. So what is XNAR gate? Just to reverse, OK? If that input has even numbers of 1, even numbers of 1, then output is equal to 1, OK? For, and, and also one more case, OK? When that inputs, all inputs are 0, all inputs are 0. For that case also, the output equal to so this is that basic case we are going to discuss here. OK, before going to this. Students wait. Let me go for the next case. I'll show you the IC connections. Students can you able to see my screen? Students can you able to see my screen? Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. So now you can see this. Uh, you can see this. 
Um, so in the diagram, in this I have shown you that I have shown you the what is that gate? Okay, how the gates are used to see if you want to add this uh, one, what do you have to do? NAND gate, we should go for 7400. Okay, 7400 is the two input NAND gate IC. So this IC, if you see one, two, three, how many? Seven and seven. So total of 14, 14 pins. 14 pins. So it takes two inputs and it gives you one output. Takes two input and one output. So what you have to do is when you want to connect a system, okay, this will be given to you. You should purchase this IC and how many NAND gates you need it. So for that you should purchase purchase, uh, purchase an uh, IC and you should do the connection diagram. Okay, so this is for AND gate. Next is you can see this for NAR. Okay, this is for NAND gate and this is for NAR, which is 7402. It is also the 14 pin IC, takes an input and produces an output. Okay, this one will be available with the data sheet, so you should check. Next is the 7404. The 7404 is for NAND gate. It is also 14 pin IC, one input and one output. You know it. Next is that 7432. So this 7432 is nothing but two it is a two input R. So two input R is a two. You can see that there are two inputs can be taken and one is an output and it has the 14 pins. OK, so this is what next we will see. Um, see the diagram. Can you able to see this? I'll, I'll come to the circuit later, but you can see this how it is used actually in this place breadboard. OK, assume this is a breadboard and the breadboard. You have to know how to the IC is fixed on that. OK, it takes an input output. OK, whatever the ICs you need, you should connect to them and then you can take it for the verification of the logical equations. OK, so students, so now I will go into this. So there are uh, basically the, we should follow the laws of uh, Boolean algebra to re reduce the equation. OK, they are commutative law, associative law and distributive law. In the commutative law, what is it? Commutative law very simple that when you add two variable A plus B, the reverse is also same. That is that commutative law. We know it already. We have studied in our uh, arithmetic algebra that 1 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1. OK, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 and 2 plus 1 is also 3. So this is what we studied in arithmetic algebra as the commutative law. But in the binary A logic, it is also same. OK, with the Boolean logic. How, how come A plus B is equal to B plus C? So you can see that A plus B. If I take that A is equal to <coughs> A is equal to 1 and B is A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1. What is that? R gate 1. If I write B as 1, A is 1, that is also I'll get 1. OK, so this is called commutative law. And the commutative law is, is, is for multiplication operations too. It's your AND operation. We because we know it for the AND operation, when both the inputs are 1, then only output will be 1. If you change that also, that is a possible. OK, so this is called commutative law. So the Boolean algebra in Boolean algebra, the commutation law is possible. OK, we can do that. OK, next we'll go for associative law. So in the case of the associative law. In the case of the associative law, what is an associative law which we have studied? In what is that? A plus B plus C within a bracket. OK, A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. So you can see that. B plus C for the B plus C we use this R gate. For B plus C we use an R gate and then the output of this B plus C gate is uh, odd with a A and this is that. OK, so similarly we can take this A, B, OK, K, A or B with this answer we can add this C. So this is called A plus B plus C. So this is the what addition of what three variable associative law. When you take that into the multiplication, multiplication you can see this BC output is BC and A is taken, then A into BC, and for this AB, C you can see this first you should perform the AB and operation with that C is and. Okay. 
So the Boolean algebra follows the associative law. Next is that distributive law. What is distributive law? So then the uh, same as we have in arithmetic algebra here, A, A within bracket B plus C, so it will be multiplied A, B plus A, C. So what is that A, B plus A, C? What you have to do? You will perform A, B and, okay, with that A, C and then both will be ordered together. Correct. So this will be A, B plus A, C. That is what noted here. This side B plus C. First we will perform the B plus C R operation and then with that the A will be added and this is X. OK, so for that also I will show you how to do this. OK, with a true table. <coughs> Next is that so similarly for the multiplication also we can go for this A plus B dot C is equal to A plus B into A. OK, A plus B. Into. A plus C. That is what A plus B, A plus C and then this one is uh, and of these two. OK, so this is what. So the Boolean algebra, the Boolean algebra satisfies the uh, commutative law, associative law and the distributive law. Next is the de Morgan's theorem. OK, so the de Morgan's theorem is very simple that A B the whole bar is equal to A bar plus B bar. Similarly, A plus B the whole bar is equal to A bar dot B bar. So this is the de Morgan's theorem. So where these theorems are used in digital logic circuits, very simple. When you design a circuit, you are writing an equation. So you want to get, you want to reduce such equations, then you can go for these kind of the laws. Now the question is, why do you need to reduce such equations? Yes, see, if you include more variables, if you include more gates into your equation, such expressions, plus dots, more dots, more plus in your equations, then what do you have to do? You have to go with the AND gates and R gates to design the circuit. So when you include more gates and uh, more uh, uh, equations, variables into your circuit, what will happen? Okay, it consume more power. So whatever the design we are doing, we should be very, it should be very effective. Efficient equations have, have to be designed. OK, OK, so in that case, what you have to do, you have to reduce that expressions as much as possible. You have to reduce the number of in, uh, in input variables as much as possible. In the, for that case only, you will get the efficient design set. OK, now it is represented. Now. Now it is represented using this that A, B, the whole bar is nothing but you know it. It is the. It is the NAND operation. So the, and A plus B, the whole bar is NOR operation that we know it, right? Now only we have seen it. So NAND and NOR operations. So what is that? This can be equal to this. How can you climb it? OK, I will take that A is 0, B is equal to 0. When both are 0, what is that output? 0 into 0 and gate is 0 and the output is 1. Same thing is taken here. A is 0, B is 0. So there is a bubble at the input side. So before going into it, it is going to be changed, right? So 1 into 1, we know it for the AND gate, it is 1. Is it satisfied? Is it satisfied, students? OK, no response from your side. 0, 1. When it is 0 into 1, it is 0. When it is out, it is 1. OK, so similarly 0, 1. When it is 0, it is 1. When it is 1, it is 0. 1 into 0. 0. You can see this. OK.
Students, are you there in the class? Are you there in the class, students? Ma'am. Okay. So similarly, you should do this for next one, one zero. So for one zero, which is zero and one, and here for one zero. So here, when it is one zero, this is zero, this is one, and here it is zero. Okay, A bar plus B bar. This is the R operation, right? So when it is one, zero, here it is zero, and here it is one, and one plus zero, it is one. And for zero plus one, it is one. So you can see this for all the cases, they are. Ah, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, screen uh, visible, ma'am. Oh, okay. okay. Presentation. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Is it now visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So when it is one and one, here that gate is one, and here it is zero. Right? It is zero. And in this case, when it is one and one, that when it is taken into the circuit, it is zero, zero, and zero plus zero, zero. So listen, students, the two tables are same, right? For A, B, the whole bar, and A bar plus B bar. That is why they are equal. That is why they are equal. So in this case, applying De Morgan theorem, in this theorem, A, B, A, B, plus C bar D, okay? So A, B plus C bar D, the whole bar. What is that? We have to deal this like A, A plus B, the whole bar. So in this case, what you will do? A bar dot B bar. A bar dot B bar. Okay. So in the place of A, what do you have? A, B. In the place of B, what do you have? C bar D. Okay. So how will you do this? A, B, the whole bar. Okay. In the place, what is that? A bar. If in the place of A bar, what do you will do? A, B, the whole bar. And in the place of the B bar, you have to write that as C bar D, the whole bar. So that is what noted here. Noted here. So you can see this A, B, the whole bar. And C bar D, the whole bar. Now the next case is that, okay, how to expand this again? Very simple that A, B, the whole bar is equal to A bar plus B bar. And the C bar D, the whole bar equal to C double bar plus B bar. What is the double bar? Okay, C double bar. What is that? Suppose if I take C is equal to zero and for C bar, it is going to be one and C double bar, it is going to be zero. Correct? Correct. When the input is one, then the C bar is equal to zero and the C double bar is equal to one. So if you have the double complement over the variable, if you have the double complement over the variable, then input and the outputs are same. So that is why it is C is written here. Okay, C is written here. Next is that we can see this A bar plus B dot C bar C. What is that operation here? Very simple students. I'm going to take this as X and the C bar is Y. So X, Y the whole bar. For how will you write X, Y the whole bar in D Morgan? That X bar plus y bar okay this is that in the place of x i got to write this a bar plus b the whole bar okay so this is that x and y we know that if it is the double bar then it is going to be the single variable and here again uh, this is of a bar plus b the whole bar okay so a plus b the whole bar is equal to a bar dot 
B bar. That is why. So double bar is going to be A and the B bar. A, B bar plus C. Can you uh, draw the two table for that uh, LHS and S, S, uh, RHS equations? RHS equations, the two table will give you the same values. Okay, so this is that. It's a very simple uh, representations of this. A dot B dot A plus B is equal to zero. How it is zero? Any idea? Any idea, students? We should go for distributive law and then we can go for associative law. We can go for the complement two. Students, is the screen visible? Students, is the screen visible? Whiteboard is visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So listen carefully. It is very simple. See, A dot B. There are some law only, okay? Some few logical equations. If you keep, remember them, then you can easily solve any kind of complex equations in the unit. So see this. It is that we're going to apply the distributive law. What is that? A dot B dot A plus A dot B dot B. Okay, so what is this? I can write A dot A, okay, dot B plus A dot P dot B. What is this actually? What is that? In uh, arithmetic algebra, we used to write when A into A is A square, right? But here, how will you write it? Very simple, students. Whenever you have a dot, go for the two table. The two table will give you the answer when you have a confusion about how to write, okay? It's very simple that when A is 1, A dot A is 1. When A is 0, 0.0 is equal to 0. What is there actually? Whatever the A which is repeating here. Yeah. Am I right? Say yes or no. So from this two table, from this two table, we can write that that A dot A is equal to A. Whatever the variable. So A dot B, okay, plus A dot B. A dot B plus, you know, B, if A into A is equal to A, then B dot B is equal to B. So what is that now? A dot B plus A dot B. Okay. Now again, A plus A. If I take this as X and this is X, then what is that? X plus X is X. Okay x plus x is x. How come it is possible if I take that x, okay? If I take x plus x, then what is 0? 0 plus 0 is 0. When it is 1, 1 plus 1 is 1. Yes. So for x plus x, it is x. Similarly, for x into x, it is x. Please note this, okay? So you can easily remember that. This is a simple uh, equations you can remember. I'll go into this, okay? So now the next question is to the students that Identity law, in the identity law, what is that? A equal to A, 1 into A. 1 into A is equal to A. You know what it, right? 1, 1 into 0 is equal to 0. 1 into 1 is equal to 1. What is that actually? 
the a value gets repeated. So we can write it, we can come to the conclusion that 1 dot a is equal to a. So similarly, 0 plus a is equal to a. How come 0 plus 0 equal to 0, 0 plus 1 equal to 1? Okay, what is that actually? The a value gets repeated when it is added with a 0. So students, that 0 plus a is taken as next is null. What is null? That is 0 into a. 0 into anything is 0, right? So 0 dot 0 is equal to 0. 0 dot 1 is equal to again 0. So we can write it that null is 0 dot a is equal to 0. Next is 1 plus a. What is 1 plus a? 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is also 1. So if we add any variable with 1, what you will get? If we if you add any variable with one, what you will get? You will get that as same one. So this is called the one plus a is equal to one. Next is that item potent law. What is that? A dot a is equal to a. This is what we discussed now in the previous slide. And a plus a is equal to a. Then inverse law. What is inverse law? If I take a is one, then a bar is equal to zero. For so one dot zero is zero. Okay. If a is zero, and a bar is 1, it is equal to 0. So similarly here, then if a is 0 and the a bar is 1, the answer is 1. If a is 1 and a bar is 0, then it is 1. Okay. Then I have explained you about the commutative law, associative law and the distributive law. Then we will go for absorption law. Very simple that. Take care. When you multiply a dot a plus a dot b. What is a dot a? a dot a plus a b. How to write this as a? Yes, this is a plus a b. So in this case, what you will do? You will take a common. So 1 plus a b. What is 1 plus a b students? 1 plus anything. Anything is 1. 1 plus anything is 1. So a into 1 plus a b is 1, 1 plus a b is 1, right? So you will get only a because a into 1 is a. In the case, very simple. Take a outside, you will get 1 plus b. Okay, so 1 plus b is 1 into a. a in 1 into anything is. Next is d Morgan theorem. Students, do you have any doubts till now? Do you have any doubts in the equations? Students? No doubts, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, this one I explained. So I'm directly going to the equivalent circuits. So in the equivalent circuits, if you see that many different logical diagrams are possible with that. How come? Whatever the equation is given to you, you should reduce that equation and then the equation has to be taken to the circuit line. Do you understand this? So this is what you have to note. So first you will get an equation and the equation has to be reduced into that. OK, so. Now I will go into the next circuit. So students, you can see this. The this is the implementation for the verification. A B plus A bar C. A B plus A bar C. Okay. So what is that A B plus A bar C and what is A plus C into A bar? A bar B. So that is what we have to know, right? A B plus A bar C must be equivalent to A plus C into A bar plus B. So this is that. We'll come to the connection diagram later. So first we will go into the slide now. So in the slide we will see whether are they equal. Okay. And then we will come to this. Is the screen visible, students? Is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. So I'll write this equation A B plus 
a bar c equal to a plus c into a bar plus b. OK, so this is that equation. Now we should see whether are they same or not. OK, first I'll take this side. I'll write a, b, c. Then I'll write a, b, a bar, c. Then is final. So what is a b zero? What is a bar c? A bar is one, but c is zero. So zero, then zero. For the next case, what is a b zero? What is a bar c one? So the y is one. What is a b zero? A bar c is zero, then it is zero. What is a b zero? Then a bar, a bar is going to be one. One into one is one. So here it is one. Next is a b zero and then a bar a bar now it is going to be zero. OK, so we know that in the during the and operation, if any input is any one input is zero, then the output is zero. OK, for this one into zero zero and for a bar c is zero, then it is zero. Next for a b a b is one. OK, but for a bar c c is zero, so zero which is to be one. And next is that a b is one, then a bar na is zero wide. OK, a bar na zero, then it is zero, then it is one. So this is this side true table, right? And the next side, this side is. This side is I'm going to take that a plus c. OK, a plus c and then I have to do this a bar plus b and then then output y. OK, what is that A plus C? A is 0 and the B is also 0, so it is 0. And what is that for this 1? For this 0, for the 0 and 1 it is 1. If any 1 input is 1, then the A plus C is 1. It is the R operations. Next is A bar B. So A bar is 1, so 1. Here A bar is 1. A bar is 1, A bar is 1. For this case, B, OK, all are 0. But then B is 1 for these two, so here it is 1. Then what is Y? Multiplication, OK? For the multiplication, what you have to do is, what you have to do is 0 into 1, 0, 0 into 1, 0, 1 into 1, 1, 0 into 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, students, can you tell me are they same? Students, can you hear me? Students, can you hear me? Are you there in the class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, can you tell me? Are they same or not? Both the tables are same or not? Yes. Both the tables are same or not? To reply. OK. Now we will go into this. OK. So now this is a circuit implementation circuit for uh, that. This one is taken as sorry. This one a b plus a bar c is taken as z z one and that a plus z and a bar plus b is taken for the z side. OK, there are z two sides, so there are two LEDs are used. So in the table in the, in the two table we have seen when the output is zero, the LED will not glow. And for that next case, the LED will glow. OK, so how to do the connection? The connection is very simple that students uh, we needed. What are the ICs we need? We need an inverter to perform a bar here and we need that uh, AND gate to do a B, a C 
and then we need R A to do A B A bar plus B, and we need this. Okay, so this side is for Z one side, and this side they are going to use for Z two. So what is that? A B plus A bar C. Okay, A this A is taken to the I C five. Okay, and output is A bar. A bar. Now, <laughs> now this A bar is taken to the AND gate because here A bar into C. So for this AND gate, the one input is A bar and another one input is C. You can see this C. So this AND gate will give you the answer for A bar C. Next AND gate must give you the value for A B. So you can see this for this AND gate, four and five are input and six is an output. So for the four. A is connected and for the five B is connected and six is an output. So sixth pin is an output for A B and the third pin is an output for A bar C. OK, so then the both of them is taken to the R gate. This R gate performs the operation and the output is taken. So this output is called Z1. OK, so then with that Z1, <coughs> With that is that one that LED is connected in series with the resistor. Do you understand the students that in the case? Students can you able to understand. So you can do the verification using the simulator for accessing the simulator students. You can go into this. The website is called the VA lab by IAT. OK, so I will share the link with you. Madam will share the link with you wherein you can go into the. Digital electronic circuits under this there are references procedures to use the simulator quizzes interactions and the theory about the things and what are the objectives for doing this experiment and what are the references quizzes on this experiment everything is listed okay so what you can do is you can go into this site and you can use the simulator they are online simulator you no need to download anything you can just run on them and you can see here open <coughs> next is that so this is that is that one side and at the z2 side a plus C. OK, so it is taken as that A input to the R gate and then C to the R gate. So A plus C output is this one. Next one is A bar plus B. So A is taken to the inverter IC. From there, the output is taken to this next one. OK, A bar and then B. Then this output is 11. OK. Now this A plus B C and A bar plus B is taken to the AND gate and then the output of the AND gate is taken here. So what you have to do is when you on the battery and when you change the values of A and B ones and zeros, then automatically you can see that two table which we have seen on the um, uh, PPD. <coughs> so this is the next one students. A B A bar C B C which is equivalent to A B A C <coughs> that we have to see. OK, so now. The equation was A B plus A bar C plus B C equal to A B plus A bar C. So now we we'll go into the PPT. Okay, in the PPT. So now we will check out this same. Okay, before proceeding this, we should check this. So they are A. B plus A bar C plus B C equal to A B plus A bar C. 
So what you have to do is A, B, C, A, B, A bar C, C, and Y. Okay, now what is AB here? AB is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. For A bar C, A bar is 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, A bar. So all the ones are 0. Next is BC. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So y is 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Our operation. So all are 1. This is this side. Okay. Now we'll go into the next side. That side is A, B, then A bar, C, and then y2, this is y1. 0, a, b is 0, a, b is 0, and here it is also 0, and here it is 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay? Okay? Next is that a bar c. So, first a bar, a bar, so this is 0, and this is 1, this is 0, this is 1. For all the remaining cases, it is going to be zero. That is what we have noted too. Now, add them. See, from this, what is our conclusion? In the left side, we have AB plus A bar C plus BC. And in the right side, we have only AB plus A bar C. Apapadhing in this equation, there is no use of having BC, right? So you should reduce this by writing the two table or by simplification. You can easily neglect these kind of the terms. So when you do that, when you do that, what will happen here is uh, you are now Reducing two gates, okay. One is that and gate, and another one is that you are aring this with this one, right? Say, yes, sir, okay. So that is why we are going for the simplification of the log to reduce the components used to, to perform the operations. Now Now we'll go for the K map. How many variables are here, students? How many variables? Three variables. They are A, B, C. How many variables? There are three variables hmm. okay so here i'm going to take a and here i'm going to set it z zero one you know that in the k map only one bit change is allowed is so zero 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 one one zero one one okay now what is given in the equation a b where is a b so A is 1 and must be B. Okay, so what is that? B bar C bar, B bar C, B C bar, B C. So when will I get B here? Only A B. 
So take these two. B C bar B C. When I add them, what will I get? B into C plus C bar. And we know that when we write C plus C bar, what is it? 0 plus 1 is 1 and 1 plus 0 is 1. So a number, so variable, if we are the variable with its complement, the answer is 1. OK, so B into 1 is B. So if we want to get A, B, what I have to look into is look from A side and then choose both of these. So you should write 1, 1 here. I hope you understand. I repeat. When A, B. When A, B. OK, when A, B. What do you have to do? Look from A equal to 1 and then B, C bar, B, C 1, 1. Next is that A bar. A bar again for C. A bar C. How to write C here? Actually, here I made a mistake. I'll do this correction. I'm sorry. Made a mistake. I'll do the correction. So it is 1, 1. I said no, only one bit changes I left. BC and 1, 0, which is BC. Yes. So what I have to do is I should change this. The logic is right, but the position changed. Anyway, we should do these corrections. Okay. So A, B, first guess will come to A, B. So look from A side and where are the B? Here are the B. So I write 1, 1. So which is B, C plus B, C bar. Take B outside and C plus C bar is 1. Next is that A bar C. So here is A bar. Where is C? These two C. So I have to write put 1, 1 here. So now see that. Yes. Yes. Any doubt? Students, do you have any doubt? Who called me? Who called me now? Shall I continue? Yes, ma'am, you can continue. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'll write that equation on this. Um, Okay, so this is that equation, right? A, B, A bar C and B, C. So now we will draw this A, 0, 1 and then B, C, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so here B, C. Okay. Here the question is A, B. So look from here A and then go for B. So here it is B for C bar, B bar C, B, C, B, C bar. Okay. Now B, take B. So this is that. Next is A bar C. So look from A side and then C. Okay. So where are we have C's? Here and here. So put this. Next will come B, C. 
OK, then BC means what? BC means what students? Only this column, right? BC column, but both are you. So if you look, if you match them, if you match them, one, two, that is sufficient, right? So what is that? What is that? It is A bar C. For this one, we'll write A bar C. For this one, you will write A B. Do you understand this? Now, why do you need to include that B C here? That is the problem. Why do you need to include the B C here? So when you include that is included one by combining these two ones, but already these two ones are included into the equations. OK, so the K mark can be used to simplify the equations and similarly using the two table also we can simplify or we can use the Boolean equations to simplify them. So next we will go for the that side. OK, that you know it, then we will go for this. So in this case of A, B, A bar, C and B, C, uh, what is that actually? C, the connection getting reduced. When you compare with EZ1 and EZ2, if there is lesser connections, then what happens? There is processing, okay? Lesser processing. For lesser input, we will get a lesser processing so that we can save the power and the speed of operations. Okay. Now, check this A for this one, AB. Okay. So, but here we have A bar. So, this size is used. So, A is taken and the A bar is at 2. Now, A bar is taken to this AND gate. Then, C then this output okay next is that bc b is taken here and c is also taken here okay p is taken here and the c is also taken here and this output is taken to the r gate so what are the inputs to the r gate simple that there are two input r gate but this side we have three okay so a b a bar c from this one, we are getting AB. It is taken to this addition. Then from this side, this gate, we are getting A bar C. They are added. The sum is taken to the uh, input for the next R gate. And then the BC is taken to this R gate. And which will produce an output 6. With the 6, that LED is connected. Okay, how many connections you can see this? And for the next one, in this case, only the BC is neglected. Only the BC. So if there is no BC here, then there is no need to go for two R gate. Only one R gate is sufficient. Similarly here, how many AND gates are used here? One, two, three AND gates are used. But in this design, if you see, only two gates are used because BC is not there. So when you reduce that equations, when you simplify the equations, then it will be uh, for easy for you to put it. Design a circuits. Students? Students? So I completed that simplifications of the uh, Boolean logic. So first I will go with the uh, two table and then I go with the uh, equation simplifications and then I go with the uh, uh, K map. Okay. Do you have any doubts till now? No. If you have any doubts, you can ask me now.
So this is the next one that verification of equivalence and or and NAND and NAND circuit. So this is also I have taken from the labs of IIT. You can see the website. See not only for this lab, for many analog electronics labs are also noted here. You included here, so you can do your experiments using that. So this circuit has four inputs: A, B, C, D. Okay, and then you can see that uh, in the two input AND gate IC that A, B plus C, D to perform this it is used two input. So you can see this to this IC that A input and the B input is taken and the output is A, B. Now C, D. So for the second AND gate in the structure is used here C and D is taken and then the output is taken to this um, R gate. Then A, B and the C, D is added is taken to the LED to show that output. Here why there are three things are there. What is that? They are VCC and the ground. We know that out of the 14 pin, one pin is for ground and one for VCC. So all the so ICs have to be connected. If you want to make that IC to work, then you have to connect this VCC and the ground with that. Similarly, A, B the whole bar and C, D the whole bar, the whole bar. OK, what is this called? So this is the uh, simplification of this uh, the, uh, De Morgan's theorem. So A, B the whole bar. So we this side we go for only the AND gate. OK, A, B the whole bar. So A and the B is taken to the input of the NAND gate. The output is A, B the bar is taken to the another AND gate, NAND gate. And then C, D the whole bar, which is C and the D is taken. And the output is also taken here. OK, A, C, D the whole bar. Now A, B the whole bar and the C, D the whole bar must be taken to the AND gate because the whole uh, a bar is there over the letter. OK, so this is that three. Now the three is taken to the LED. So if you see that your two table will function for this. Right students? And next to that, similarly, A, B, the, the reverse process. So A plus B uh, into C plus D. OK, then what we will go for this? We go for the, we will do the R operation. OK, and then we will do the AND operation. Then it will be taken to the load cell. So similarly, A plus B the whole bar. So here all are NOR operations. So this can be taken, OK? So when you have AND and R, they can be replaced with the NOR gate using this operation. So A plus B into C plus D. So we can go for, we can go for, when you want to implement that using only the NOR gate, then you can go for the, uh, a plus B the bar and C plus B the bar and the whole. So we'll go for this now. So here. A plus B. C plus D. OK, A plus B into C plus D. So is equivalent to a plus B the bar and C plus D the bar into whole bar. So how to do the two table? A, I'll go for the another one. It will not be C. A, B, C, D. So I have not going to continue this. So I'm going to stop here, which is A plus B, C plus D. OK, so what is A plus B? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 
per step test it is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So now you'll have to multiply this. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this is that A plus B dot C plus D. So I'm going to continue the same for students. Can you able to understand? OK, so this is that. Now we'll go going to continue the same for the next one. What's that? A plus B the whole bar. C plus D the whole bar, then A plus B the whole bar, C plus D the whole bar, and then whole bar. Okay, so 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. What, what is that actually, students? That when you add these two, answer is 1, but NAR gate, so 0. Okay, for C plus D. This is C plus D 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now we have to do the what is that? 1 dot 1, the complement. Okay, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. OK, so A plus B the whole bar dot C plus D the whole bar the whole. So how will you do this now? A plus B. OK, so take this. All. Complement it. Take this all. Add and complement it. OK, so. This is that we should perform to the. C plus D the whole bar. When you add, you will get one and the complement. OK. After that, what do you have to do it to that is we should multiply. And then. Take the complement of it. OK, so now we will go into this. So that is why here the NOR gate is used. OK, A plus B the whole bar and C plus D the bar, the whole bar. So this is that A plus B, C plus D. So students, you should follow this way to find the answer. So zero. That's a compliment.
So students, now you can see the true table matches, right? Say yes or no. So this can be taken to this. This can be taken that A plus B plus C plus D is A plus B the whole bar, C plus D the whole bar, the whole. Okay, students. Students, now if you have any doubts, you can we can discuss. Pencil now. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What are the questions in the curriculum? Students, if you're having any doubts, please use the time. OK, I hope there is no doubts in this class. Ma'am, um, now shall we go for a photo session, ma'am? Yes. So students, please switch on the camera for a photo session. Participants, kindly switch on your camera Abhinaya. for photo session. Abhinaya, turn on your camera. Sangeeta. Yes, ma'am. Turn on your camera. Stand on your camera. So all the participants. Stand on your camera for photo session. <laughs> 